channel and in this video I'm going to go Japanese thrift short but Japanese thrift shop shopping also I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can have a beautifully collected and personable home that doesn't look like it's out of a catalog see you in the video okay I am so excited I literally don't know where to look. There are so much cute little things here. Learning how to feel comfortable filming in public Trying to show you suddenly How hilarious is this voice to text Makes me laugh I am back from the Japanese op shop or thrift store or um, junk shop. Not junk, it's not junk, but it's Japanese people's junk. I haven't ever, I've never done a haul video of any kind. And I actually went in to try to find frames for a photo wall that I want to do in our kitchen and than the ceramics. I feel like my style is a collected style, but I am quite minimal in the sense that I am very selective about what I want to have around me that's visible. Um, so it tends to come across as maybe a mix of collected and minimal. I don't know what that's called. Um, so I don't generally do something like this but I have a couple of houses in Australia which I'm going to be decorating and styling and so I thought that I'm going to live with these things around me because they're beautiful and then if it feels too cluttered obviously not all in one space but if it feels too much then um, whatever pieces are excess I'm going to take to Australia and use in the styling of the homes there I've got two kitchens which have got open shelving they all partial of open shelving um, so yeah so some things I even actually got to of because I knew that I was going to keep on for myself like including this little vase here similarly with this little pot here and I'm going to show you them up close because they're just beautiful I can't explain their textures the colors like this where you can see the marks from it have it having been on a fire and the top of it is just incredibly gorgeous we've got these kukashi dolls i don't know if i'm saying it correctly they're japanese dolls that are one solid piece so they don't have arms and legs and they are said to bring like good luck or good fortune and they are obviously quite they're much older um, than the new ones that you would see and then down the bottom they have an inscription of who made the doll yeah it's super they're just beautiful I obviously don't need these but I just couldn't walk past them this dish here again if someone knows what this dish is specifically used for there was a lot of dishes which had interesting indentations which felt like they were intentional um, as opposed to just a design detail, but I don't know enough about ceramics or Japanese um, food wares to know. Uh, so if you know, let me know in the comments. But it has these three indentations on the side, and then look at the bottom. 
I was thinking of it as a, a cake plate or something for cupcakes or sweets or anything. A catch-all, I mean, it could really be anything. You see that notch in there? I just even love the idea that somebody's pressed their finger in there. I don't know. These little things, ah, they get me. Little details. And then these really beautifully colored, I wish there was more, there was, I could only find three. They have uh, letters stamped on them, but they, they're gorgeous. I thought they're really nice latte cups. We could use a bunch of teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny things. Teeny, teeny, tiny, which look really cute grouped together. A flat, a pot for flat, like for flowers or gardening because um, I was actually looking for that and then I saw that one in a beautiful colour. I got this oil painting. Look at the back of the frame. I was thinking of potentially even displaying the back of this frame because it's just so beautiful, interesting. All of the writing, obviously that, that's on the actual canvas, but that's the person maybe who's painted it. Um, yeah, I just loved that. Um, but some of the oil um, parts, like some of the oil has peeled off on the painting, but that's okay. I'm going to start showing you up close because, because you can't see from there what I am seeing. And I'm going to go again, like I said, uh, because the things that I've found here, the prices, like if you're curious, uh, I believe this was $8. $8. I found a set of these because I was looking for something for my kids to have snacks in. So these are like snack or breakfast bowls. Again, I went like I went to look at breakfast bowls here for the kids and for and they cost more than these per item and are not so beautiful. So I still feel like I won't I might be sad if they break these. <laughs> but it won't like be like, oh my gosh, you broke something so expensive. And then there's these little ones which stacked together look insanely beautiful. Right, now I'm going to show you some things up close just so you know I'm not nutters. Beautiful green with blue veining through it. The bottom is glass and the inside is this deep sort of chocolatey brown colour. Or, or even it's hint of red mahogany. This was a dollar fifty. The idea that it's lived somewhere else. These might be like these are probably like Target items in Japan, like Japanese Target. You know what I mean? Might be totally run of the mill there. Tell me in comments if you know. Like this is just so usual and regular. But that's what's uh, lovely about collecting things um, is that something that's just so normal for one person is just extremely interesting and inspiring for somebody else that's what I love about creativity and and creation of objects I had a mic on this whole time and I didn't realize that I hadn't turned it on I will learn the YouTube ways I will learn that it's important that I wanted to mention in this video is that you can have a lot of your items in your home be from a big box brand store um, or some big furniture store or an online furniture store so your couch your coffee table your bookshelves your mirrors but i think the thing that makes a home or a space feel warmer more considered more collected more natural is if the decor items that you put in that space are not also from big box brand stores or not all from big box brand stores because what tends to happen and I've noticed is that even in homes where they try to mimic that old collected sort of feeling, you can tell that it's all new and it almost looks fake. Um, so, and or your home ends up looking kind of catalog-ish. Um, so the pieces are beautiful. I'm not saying vases and things aren't, you know, those objects aren't beautiful, but it just tends to look sort of like not interesting. Um, and not personal and buying things like this and displaying them instead in your home will make your home feel more 
collected, considered, beautiful, the textures, the colors, the even things that are used so they've had a life before you're giving it a fresh perspective. It just has a different feeling and a different look to it. I think you can immediately tell. And the other sort of thing I wanted to say was you might not have a store like this. Um, I haven't, this is the first time I've had a store like this in my locality, but there are other ways that you can collect things for decor. So you can go to Etsy is a fantastic place. There are lots of places on Instagram now, creators on Instagram or businesses on Instagram that show you vintage curated things that you can buy online. You can go to your local op shop. You can go to the markets in your locality and there, then you're supporting artisans and creators in your local area. And when you move, or, and if you move from that area, that's also a nice keepsake from that area. When you go traveling, you know, instead of buying like a shirt that says the country that you've traveled to or the hat that says, you know, the country that you've traveled to, hopefully people aren't doing that anymore. But anyway, I think they do buy a ceramic, buy a vase, buy something that you can display in your home that's not got the name of the place stamped on it. I'm going to say that again. Don't buy things that have got the name of the place stamped on it. Yeah. So get something that has a story to it. Even you going to an op shop or a vintage store and looking for things has a story. Like I will fondly remember these pieces of me and my friend, like going through this Japanese store and having conversation and finding these beautiful pieces. That's That's got a story, has meaning to it. So yeah, that's my two cents worth. Something my friend mentioned is how do I style these small items in a home without it looking too cluttered? And I thought maybe I can do a little video about how I'm going to style these items throughout my home and show you some tips and tricks on how to, what you can do if you have like collections or things that are quite tiny or petite or, or sweet. I generally tend to err towards more weighty items just because like I said, I don't like having too much um, small things for my my eyes but yeah if that's something that you're interested in or you want to learn about some tips and tricks on how to style these sorts of items then please look out for my video about that and you can like and subscribe this subscribe to my channel I've never said that before it feels super weird or you cannot subscribe to my channel that's completely up to you but um, if you want to just stay in touch with what I'll be producing key then yeah that would be awesome and let me know in the comments if you know anything about any of these interesting pieces that I've shown you that you can give me a little bit more information about what they're used for or techniques of how they've been made or anything about um, Japanese ceramics or what I should look out for when I go next time because like, there will be a next time yep I'll be I'll be there I'll be back there. I would live there.